Yasu Melene Saudi Ke Mateno Elinika. So yes, I'm learning Greek now because I have a trip to Greece coming up in September. I find that whenever I learn the native language of the country I travel to, it's so much easier to connect with the people there and to make friends. I experienced this previously when I went to Hamburg on my own. Hamburg has a huge Spanish immigrant population and I went to Hamburg kind of brushing up on my German first and then ended up having to speak a lot of Spanish while I was there. But honestly, one of the best restaurants I ever went to was a Spanish restaurant in Hamburg because as I spoke Spanish to the people, they were so friendly, gave me a bunch of free stuff and I just got to learn a lot about the people there. I went to Hamburg for the Empiricon Metal Festival, which was always a dream of mine. And it was so easy to make friends at the concert by just chatting with them in German. And it was cool because by the end of the night, there was a big group of people that knew about the New Yorker who spoke German who came just for this concert. So now I'm super inspired to learn uh, the language of the place I'm going to before I go, if it's easy enough to learn in like a, you know, six to eight month time frame. So that's why I started learning Greek now. I have a two week trip to Greece coming up in September and I've been trying to learn Greece this summer over the last few months and I wanted to make this video to talk about what I did and how I've been able to learn it really quickly given the languages that I already know how to speak. I started first with Duolingo to just get a feel of how the language is and some of the introductory phrases. The Duolingo course for Greek is also nice because it starts you off with learning the letters and some example words you need with all of them. And I then use that in conjunction with this book that I'll put right here, Greek Script Hacking. I checked this book out from my local library and it promised that I would be able to read Greek within four to five hours. And sure enough, with my STEM background and having to use the Greek letters a lot for math courses, within two hours, I could basically read all of the words in there. This book had a lot of English cognate words, which I'll put up some of the examples up here. Uh, so it was really easy to recognize a lot of the words. Once I got a hang of how to read Greek, I decided to get like a essentials textbook. Uh, this is the one that I got, I'll put here. I didn't invest a lot of money into materials for Greek, I just checked them out of the library because this isn't something that I think I'll continue in the long run. I just really want to learn basic phrases so I can chat with the locals. Because this book was essentials only, it was very useful for learning phrases for how to get around town, plurals, the months, ordering at a restaurant, etc. So it was pretty easy to pick those phrases up. It also had basic grammar lessons, so that was useful for just forming my own sentences. I started my own Anki flashcard deck as well, so I could just review some of these phrases. For the first couple weeks of learning Greek, I was only studying maybe like an hour top every week, like 15 minutes here in the morning, like another 30 minutes in the afternoon, skipping a few days. But I was doing Duolingo every single day to make sure that my brain was still practicing Greek every day. The Duolingo course was also following my textbook pretty well. Like the textbook would go into uh, how to order at a restaurant and then the Duolingo course would also say like, Tha itela spaghetti, like I would like spaghetti. And it was easy to practice the same words in a week. So after a certain point of just using Duolingo and like just studying from a textbook, I realized that I really couldn't form sentences. So I decided to just get an italki teacher for the next six to eight weeks before my trip. I've now had uh, two lessons on italki and the teacher is phenomenal. I feel like I could already speak to a local if I wanted to. It wouldn't be good, but I can say, how do I get to this place? I would like to order this at a restaurant. I want to buy a ticket. All of the useful things to travel to Greece. We even did an audio exercise my first class where it sounded like absolute gibberish. It was an exercise about children talking about their hobbies. And I could only pick out words like musiki for music, gymnastiki for gymnastics, but like couldn't understand any of the rest of it. But by the second lesson, it was really easy to pinpoint kind of what people were saying about themselves. Granted, these were really easy audio exercises, like just talking about family and things like that. But I was pretty impressed how much progress I made after just two speaking courses, alongside learning more words from the textbook. 
I've been incorporating Anki also every day. As I'm studying, I try to enter the new words into Anki right then and study them every single day. I know this isn't really realistic for long term, but just for like the six weeks I have left till my trip, I want to really hammer some of these basic phrases into my head. In order to practice saying the words, I've been doing what everyone considers cringy and listening to my own voice. I've been recording my own voice in the app saying the words so that when each word comes up, I can hear how it sounds. And I got some speaking practice while saying it. So my goal is to just speak Greek at a conversational level so that while I'm there, I can just converse with people. I find that people are more willing to share parts about their culture when you can speak to them in their language or at least ask about it. Because even if I start in Greek and it kind of falls apart, they at least know that I want to learn more. Because of this, I've been very discriminatory about what words I'm learning, mainly just words focused towards the goal of traveling there and speaking to people. If the textbook had words like carpet or washing machine, I'm like, is that really going to come up in Greece? No, so I just don't even bother learning them. And because I'm into historical linguistics, as you can see by the book on my shelf, I did want to talk a little about what has made Greek easier to learn for me. I did have to study Greek roots and English words in high school for the SAT. And those are really coming in handy because a lot of the words you can easily see are related to those English words, or I guess the other way around. The English words are related to the Greek ones. For example, pedi means kid, like pediatrician. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, having a STEM background means that I already knew the Greek letters. So if she ever asks me to spell something, it's easy to say like alpha, lambda, lambda, alpha, because I've already heard math teachers say them so many times. And another similarity I noticed is the grammar reminded me a lot of Spanish. Like the way you say me gusta for I like something, it's similar in Greek, or even some of the verb conjugations are kind of the same, like how vosotros has like estáis in Spanish. Some of the you conjugations in Greek also end with ais or east. I'm going to put a little map up here of all the languages I can speak and kind of how they tie into one another in my head. Even if I don't continue Greek after this trip, I think this was a really rewarding experience to learn another branch of the Indo-European family and to integrate that more into my comprehensive bubble of languages. I'm really excited to share more with you all about learning Greek and my trip to Greece. So please subscribe if you're interested and thanks. Yasu!